You know, it was once said that gay people are everywhere. And a case in point, someone that I didn't know was gay for a long time, a senior advisor to San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee, Tony Winokur. How are you? Uh, good afternoon, David. I'm well, thank you. That just shows you what a pro you are. I mean, you were uh, focused on your job when you were working for Gavin Newsom, and I never even knew. What does that say about our community, that you can rise to the heights of political power now and being gay isn't, a, isn't an issue anymore? Well, I, I think that's what we're, we're, we've been fighting for and, and yeah. people who came before us especially we're fighting for is that we can be in any position that we're not, you know, segregated into certain kinds of professions mm -hmm. or, or we're not... Uh, you, you know, we, you, you don't necessarily know who is gay and who isn't. I right. think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. It means that we celebrate the entire spectrum of men yeah. and women and, and transgender people, and, yeah. and we're based on our accomplishments and yeah. on the merits, and I think that's what we want. How long have you worked for the San Francisco Mayor's Office? How many mayors now? Uh, this is, uh, mayor Lee is my second mayor. Uh -huh. I started out with under Mayor Newsom uh, in 2009 as his communications director, press secretary. Uh, he became lieutenant governor. My intention was actually not to stay on with Mayor Lee, not because he's not yeah. an awesome, wonderful guy who's amazing to work for and, as I'm sure we'll talk about, and I think has been a great mayor for the city, but you just, you know, new mayors need new teams and... Yeah, you're not surprised when teams change. When yeah. the executive changes, you take, you know. And especially with a, a position like the spokesperson, press secretary, which, you know, Mayor Lee and, and then Mayor Newsom, they're, they're in their own way, they're, they're, they're very different people. Yeah. And the spokesperson for Mayor Lee needed to be a different kind of person than the spokesperson right. for Mayor Newsom. Well, I guess, you know, to go back to my original question, when you're in the job you're in, being a spokesperson, you're kind of professionally neutral. It's, you know, you're, you're always the person that has to deliver the agenda for your, your guy or your gal, and you don't let your personal life enter into it. And living in San Francisco, I would imagine it would be difficult sometimes to be neutral when it comes to gay and lesbian issues. I mean, you've seen a lot under two mayors in the last few years. Has that been... What kind of balancing act has it, that been it, sometimes? I would say it's been no balancing act because with re certainly with respect to LGBT issues or sort of celebrating who we are and yeah. the, indivi the individuality of people in San Francisco. You know, Mayor Newsom, uh, obviously a straight politician, uh, no greater friend to the LGBT community, LGBT mm -hmm. community has ever existed. You know, what he did with gay marriage in 2004, and the advocacy that he's continued, now, you know, obviously now as lieutenant governor, uh, you, know, you know, there were no issues there, and certainly Mary Lee has continued that. Right. Mary Lee started as a civil rights lawyer, tenants attorney, um, you know, celebrates the individual, and so you know, we can be who we are in San Francisco, and also then articulate the positions of uh, yeah. two mayors. I've always said that in San Francisco, we not only push the envelope, we kind of like print whole new envelopes so the rest yeah. of the country can fall into it. Do you think we would be here? pondering the possibility of a Supreme Court decision that legalizes marriage equality without Gavin Newsom? I, I, I think unequivocally no. I mean, and if you, and, you know, it's, a, it's amazing, you know, the LGBT rights movement, how far we've come mm -hmm. in 10 years. Uh, you know, I never thought growing up as a kid in Michigan, you know, closeted, you know, relentless negative stereotypes, relentless negative imaging, mm -hmm. you know, about being gay that, you know, I just, you, we fought it, I fought it, uh, denied it for a long time. Uh, I, I could never have imagined what, you know, that the Supreme Court of the United States would be about to potentially deliver right. the right to marriage equality. Or that even without that decision at the moment, we got 36 states in the District of yep. Columbia where, yep. where it's yep. legal. Yep. yep, And Mayor Newsom at the time, I mean, he was vilified for it, remember? He, uh, even our state oh, senior death senator, threats. Feinstein, you know, the people blamed John Kerry's loss on him in 2004. I mean, he, you know, it, now you look back, people say, oh, he was, you know, he it was San Francisco, it was easy. It was not easy. He made mm -hmm. a very bold decision because he knew it was the right thing to do. And I think we're all, at, we're all better off for it. Yeah. And I do not think we would be here today with the Supreme Court right. potentially this summer without Mayor Newsom in 2004. How did you get here? When did you find that politics was the bug that had just bit you deep? Well, uh, it started for me. I can. There's well, there's a couple of distinct moments. I came to San Francisco in 1999 uh, from D.C. But my real interest in politics. I mean, I'd always been interested. I think dating from uh, dating back from when I was a little kid. My dad would come home, and it was you know. It was like clockwork. We would eat dinner at 6 o'clock on TV trays in the living room. My parents got divorced when I was pretty young. And we would watch the news. And my dad would give his running commentary on the news <laughs> every night. And I think that's what got me interested in current events and policies and, that, and the implications of, you know, government decisions on people's lives. Uh, and then when I, 
I distinctly remember the moment I said I want to get involved in politics, and it was in 1992 when I was a, a senior at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, uh, go blue, and Bill Clinton did his final debate of that campaign against George Bush Sr. in East Lansing, Michigan, and then after that debate it was like midnight. They traveled to Ann Arbor and they had like a 15,000 person rally uh, on the U of M campus. I had been helping the advance team to, uh, put together the rally for the first few days before that night. And you know, when you're 21 and this advanced team rolls in and you know, they give you a Secret Service pin. It's and cool. They buy kegs of beer to work <laughs> late at night. Like there's nothing cooler. And I distinctly remember the moment I had intended to go to law school. I had intended to become a lawyer, I, you know, whatever track that would have led. But that moment when I was on the stage and then candidate Clinton, Governor Clinton, his wife, all those people in Ann Arbor, the whole hope and change. I was like, I'm not going to law school. So it was Clinton I and do a kegger. This. It was. It was Clinton and keg. That's right. That's <laughs> and it's probably not that much different in 2015. Yeah, well, it? hey. We have another Clinton. Yeah. Uh, we got a few moments left. I want to talk to you about the political scene. How do you think the Supreme Court decision is going to go? What happens if it doesn't go well? And uh, what do you think about the chances for Hillary Clinton? Well, I, you know, I would defer to lawyers on the Supreme Court. I know you've had Kate Kendall on your show before. Yeah. I think she feels, National Center for Lesbian Rights has been very involved. I, I think folks feel good. It all comes down to Justice Kennedy, by all accounts, uh, who's often hard to read. It sounds like the hearings, he people could have gone both ways. I, we're on an, an inexorable curve, mm -hmm. inexorable journey towards marriage equality. I, I think the Supreme Court, and I'm hopeful that the Supreme Court will, will rule that it's a national right, that it's a constitutional right. I don't think people who are looking uh, to their legacy and history want to take a half step. Mm -hmm. I think they know that this is inevitable. They, and they can wanna, see this is a historic they moment. They want to be on the right side of history. I think Justice, Ro you know, Chief Justice Roberts, certainly Justice Kennedy, uh, I, I think they will go all the way. I think we will have a huge celebration here in San Francisco. And you said before happens. we started this interview that the last day of the Supreme Court term is the day after Gay Pride here. So it's I mean, Monday. They could really drag it out. They could. It, they could do it to Monday. But I think if you know that same eye towards history, hopefully they'll say, you know what, we're going to give. LGBT folks in America a, a little extra reason to celebrate yeah, this yeah. pride and, and we'll hopefully rule on it that Thursday or Friday. We just got about 30 seconds left. Talk to me about what you think is going to happen in the presidential race. Just you know, finger in the wind. Again, stuff. I'm so focused on our local things and we have to reelect elect Mary Lee in right? 2015, but I think we'll have President Clinton in 2016 and I'm strongly supporting her and I know Mary Lee and uh, Lieutenant Governor Newsom and others are, are as well. So. Yeah. One last word from you. If you had one word to describe your career here in San Francisco City Policy, what would it be? Uh, memorable, transformative. Uh, memorable and transformative. Those, those are two, are two words. There's actually three <laughs> words. But, uh, That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thanks David. David. Thanks. Okay. We've been talking to Tony Winokur, San Francisco Mayor Lee's office. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching 10%.